let's move forward and let's add this nice overhanging roof uh, to our model. So we will open up. We're continuing with the 9.2, the office. And let's get going. Let's open up Revit. Okay, you should have finished your recent model where we added the floor slabs and some levels. Let's go ahead and add the roof. First thing we need to do is to get uh, it, this actually chapter tutorial for it. I just want to make a note. It, it starts out like you're going to do the stairs, but it's actually the roof. So some, you may you even miss this little portion, but let's get going. Okay, so we're going to look at where roofs, ceilings, and floors are located. We're going to place ourselves uh, into the roof on the floor plan. So let's, I'm missing my palette. Let me get all my tools. Palette drops off. Uh, you can type PP. Enter. Okay, so it was the pro project browser I was missing and have located it. And I usually keep it off to the side here. Uh, let's continue forward with making our roof. We'll do it a little differently than we've been doing it. So let's go to architecture, roof. We're going to choose roof, roof by footprint. Okay. And then it's, you know, we are going to switch it. So we'll take, uh, the Revit advice. Yes. And that put us up on the roof. Doesn't look like it. Let's go. Let's force it in there. Okay, that looks much better. Try number two, then we'll go back to the architecture. Uh, I'm currently in it. Whenever you have, this is a good point, whenever things freeze up like this and it all turns gray, it means that you have a past command that you haven't dealt with, and it's usually going to be, look, I still had it. So that turquoise color that came up, uh, I had to click back on that to get back into that palette. Otherwise, I can't do anything. Uh, and if I wanted to cancel at this point, I would put the X, but I think I'm feeling good about this. So let's, we're going to get our basic roof. I'm going to follow the instructions when it is. Okay. I, I actually had to redo it so I could get this bar was not showing up. So we're going to take off in our, we're in our roof properties. So we're going to take find slope is off. We're going to create an overhang. And we're going to switch this to our generic roof number 12, the 9 inch. The tool that we're going to reach for is going to be the rectangle tool. And the rectangle tool gives me an option uh, how far over the rectangle do you want to hang over and, uh, our. Rectangle measurement is 18 inches. I'll plug in 18 here. One foot six is it's what it's equal to. And then we're going to go to the and add this row. So we'll start at one end. Come in here and grab with your rectangle tool. This is almost almost more like Adobe. So we're going to place this. And you can see the overhang happening, right? And I'll zoom in for accuracy and snap it. Drop back a little. And I can see how it's hanging out over the edge. So that's a pretty nice feature. I like that. I will accept to get, check my last bits of information before I push the check mark. Okay, looks good. So we'll put the check mark. I'll accept it. And yes, I will attach. If you don't attach, you might have a gap. Uh, that blue symbol, that shows me that I'm done correctly. And now I'll verify it by going to the north elevation. Or any elevation, really. And there it sits. Uh, is that the result? I think there might be a little problem here because this is extending out. But that is a different problem. Uh, so I can adjust that. Okay, so I reread the, the note. Uh, I did miss some information. That looks roughly three feet, and I went back to the instructions, and lo and behold, I did miss uh, a base level offset from level coming in here at three feet. So didn't read the directions. 
Now I'll enter it. Yes, it will edit. And now I can see the result. So now everything's fine and dandy. I can double check by going up here to the instant 3D view uh, and then further confirm. And there's the windows. Here, here's what the book shows. And so I, I was a little taken back and I did go back to the, the reset. Check out the box up here is the view cube. You can click on your house here too. So we just have to have the blank side of the wall. So it looks like uh, some kind of worshipful structure. The, uh, so let's, let's carry on. I think we've done what we need to do for the roof. So let's move forward to the stairs. Stairs are fun and interesting. So we'll go to architecture. We'll just throw a few of the stair types down uh, so you can kind of see what you get. Uh, and kind of want to play around with some of these. There's just monolithic stairs, precast stairs, and you really don't know until you start applying them what you're going to get. So you can see that it first lays out as a flat 2D. Okay, let me read this paragraph from the opening. To add stairs to the project, you should first open the appropriate view. For most locations, you will find it easier to sketch the stairs in plan view. Since the stairs start from the first floor, you can open the corresponding floor plan. Use the run tools to sketch stair run and the boundary to tools to create the semicircular landing before sketching the stairs. Draw reference planes to assist you in sketching the run, which is important for us. So we're going to go to the ground floor. Double click on our location. And there's that. Let's get rid of this. Or that. Okay, so we're going to pick our monolithic stair, which it has been chosen. And then we're going to make some modifications into the properties. We're going to do cast in place. And actual run width, edit the box, actual run width. Okay, I had to re-click. Uh, I had to cancel out so I could get this to appear again. It wasn't showing. So sometimes you can go too far in and some of this will drop off. But I really need this bar so I can do the actual run width. Let me put that at five. Set the number of risers as 24. After setting the stair properties, you can draw the reference planes. You can invoke it from the reference plane tool in the work plane pan panel. Okay, so let's find our work plane panel. <laughs> and off to the right, we can see the work plane. And the work plane panel, work plane viewer, reference plane, and show work plane. And built in. Okay, place reference tool will be selected. Now, in your book, there's a, a sculpted area where you're going to lay out these work planes. And it's going to show that they're two feet six inches off the wall. Let me get this you are counting for us. Let me zoom down so I can see it. Okay, so I can, we'll just go ahead and type it in. Space six. And then bring that work plane down. Uh, it can be to an indeterminate amount. It doesn't look like that part is too accurate. Let's do another one. Type it in just because it's not finesse enough. Here we go. Line that up. And now what I'm doing is I'm sketching the area where the open slab is going to go. It's going to give the stairs a trajectory to follow, a line, if you will, so that it will make things a lot easier in placement. Okay. And then there's this. There's the 11 foot marker. Uh, and I had trouble making that with a reference plane. So one of the old methods, because I'm I'm a primitive human, I usually go with go back to my draw 
and just use a, a plain old everyday line instead of a reference plane. Uh, I'm known for doing that, but if you don't come back and clean it up, of course, you know, you might have little little boo-boos and junk. Uh, so I don't advise it, but it sure helps me out. Okay, so let's continue now. We can go ahead and trace our stair. It's re requesting the monolithic stair. Let's see if there are some adjustments I have to do to this stair. We double the usher on the ground floor. Checking our things here and options bar, actual run width, type in five. Remember our bar up here. So we're going to go take this, put in five. Just employees and <clears throat> set the number of risers to 24. You can see that it really wanted to start off right away, but. It has a few more adjustments. Turn four. After setting the stairs, invoke the reference plane tool. Okay, <clears throat> that's where the directions get a little confusing. Type start at point A. You can start to see it being created. End point. And then when you when you do click off, the next thing you make is a landing. And that's automatic, and then the next part starts up. And then we finish off here. And Revit will tell us if we finished good. Looks like we did good, except uh, we can see that we're a little out of shape. Uh, so how will we remedy that? Okay, the lazy architect way is I'm going to use the grips and move these in. Black. And then my modified tool. Try to line that up. Uh, line this part up and there was something wrong in one of the little dialog boxes so i'm just trying to get back on track without too much effort and then i can go back and see what my true mistake was but the most important thing like this space isn't is aesthetically important but not by code but this is the one i want to be sure is going to be hit at five that's code okay it's like I have to do it myself. So we'll lock this when we get there. Let's lock that. And then let's move this out to five. And this is where we can, once we have that lock, uh, same here. Let's make sure that this is five. We have lock on it. That way it can only explode out this other side. So let's move this. Okay. Okay, so I was working in a confined space and could not see that this is at the top. Uh, OSHA says something about working in confined space. It's very dangerous. Okay. Constraints are not satisfied. Okay, so I'm getting my uh, messages. And I have to slow down, so we will cancel. We'll go back. Okay, so the lazy architect way didn't work out for this, but uh, it Visually, it looks okay, uh, so I have to come back and correct that. Okay, this this part is in the directions are the most mystifying because you're supposed to select the modify stairs tab and go to the panel, but it I don't quite make it that way, so I have to do it my way. So let's go and get that elevation view back to our north. And I've turned off my walls, otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. I cleared off the modify tool and I'm going to <clears throat> connect disconnect levels, multi story stairs. And I'm going to see what the video says about connecting levels. To select multiple levels, use the selection box <clears throat> or press control while selecting the levels. <clears throat> I've hold down the control key and I've selected these. The problem is you don't. You don't see it happen. You have to wait until you click the checkbox to see your result. Uh, so that's that's the workaround to it. <clears throat> and this video will soon close. So let me just see if I can do the connect levels. This shows up. And then until I do the green check, then things show up. 
Thank you.